ER folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Dee Shanger. I'm a mod and live stream director here at Occupy Toronto Livestream since day one on uh, October 15th, 2011. And this is episode 113 of my weekly masterclass show, uh, Shanger's How to Live Stream. And uh, the last episode was three months ago, folks, uh, on July 19th. And uh, and uh, yeah, so this episode makes this the longest running show uh, ever at Occupy Toronto because for the last three months, Tide in first place was us and Devine's First Nations show, uh, which he hasn't done for a while. And uh, so this is a record breaking episode. And uh, thank you for all the viewers. Plus, personally, uh, after four years of solid live streaming and close to 5,500 live streams, I've taken. Uh, uh, but a two-month break. It's the only time in the last four years. So now that I'm back and uh, we got a special uh, episode here on screen, we have Luis Ramirez joining us live from the DR. Hello, Luis. Hello. Yar. And as you notice, we like to say Yar a lot here. And... Um, yeah, and uh, Ariel is uh, going to be joining us, Ariel Fornari. Uh, he is not in the DR, as usual, but he is, because uh, that's when we've usually interviewed him down there. But he's in New York City, and uh, he's having some slight tech issues, so he will call us. And as well, we will be having uh, another regular, Brian Seaman, who is a human rights lawyer extraordinaire from Calgary and a member of the Occupy Toronto live stream page. So Luis, uh, on this episode we're going to be talking about, a, yes, live stream as always, uh, but um, how the government corruption, which we've documented it over the last few years with Ariel and others, uh, you know, uh, in the Dominican Republic, it's totally, totally out of control and, and the people are fighting back in a big way for a change. So maybe I'm um, where in the DR are you right now? I'm in Santo Domingo. I'm in the capital of the Dominican Republic right now. Nice. That's why your signal is so nice. And tell us a little bit about you. Um, I'm actually um, I'm in the private sector. I'm, I um, went to college in the U.S. Right now I'm more doing some uh, in, into the social um, protest due to the fact that we are being just slotted by government corruption um, things here has gone have gone out of control lately in the last eight years and uh, death economy death of the country it's above um, imaginary numbers due to um, Government corruption, let's say, uh, lately has been worse because even we have death. We have a lot. We have a. Uh, we have had uh, um, mass suicides from people that just don't know what to do uh, at, with um, the government owning them money and not solving problems. Uh, education here, it's it's zero investment. Uh, even though we we signed a pact with the government uh, years ago, um, health today we put in, in in the net some pictures that even five children in one same bed in hospitals. There, it's it's it's, it's insane. It's, it's insane. It's unhuman what's going on. And we've we've been talking to the government. We've been asking them just to do their job and spend what they need to spend and they don't listen they just don't listen and this is only this all all its re-election the the actual party wants to stay in government even though the constitution said they couldn't they modify the constitution so this president president medina can run again so we have no law whatsoever that could protect us as you know, um, every Wednesday we're doing a human chain in front of uh, one of the government um, 
uh, offices that has reported the latest scandal of corruption and um, with with the police has has hasn't uh, given us the liberty or the chance to protest and um, I mean it's a pacified protest no violence whatsoever um, and they 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 block the streets they even um, let's say uh, they they chained us they 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 surrounded us with um, barricades so we couldn't even after the protest get out of where we were we couldn't get to the our cars they held us prisoners there um, they've used pepper spray they've used violence they've used verbal abuse physical abuse against us so this is getting out of hand they want to install a dictatorship in this country and we we are not allowing it nice nice and 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 uh, it's weak it, it, it's weak we're going, we, <coughs> go ahead uh no we we're not doing we're not using aggression we're not using violence this is all pacify and we 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 rectify and we uh clarify that every every five minutes in the protest we won't we don't want anyone there that could go and insist in in insistate or or promote violence this is all very pacific very um organized very um human what we're asking of what we're doing and what we're asking it's just for um the law to do its job it's for it's for stop corruption it's for a uh, stop the spending money on on unnecessary stuff and start spending with what there needs to be spent in health in education in food i mean we 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 were going back years and years in every measurement education poverty food health everything and this is not stopping yes yes yeah, i'm just trying to get a hold of uh, of uh, ariel no problem uh, one thing is that we've been doing this for three wednesdays now and this wednesday this next wednesday it's not going to be only in the city we're going into other cities in the of the country we're going to puerto plata we're going to bonao we're going to Asua. we're going uh santiago it's going to be a huge one too uh la romana san pedro and even new york the Mexicans in new york will be doing will be doing a um will be doing uh, a human chain I'm gonna tell you exactly where. Um, this Wednesday at five, at the same time as we're gonna have it here. So they're gonna be simultaneously um, in all those cities, because we we want them to get the message. But we need to definitely. You see, it's gonna be Wednesday, twenty eighth at seven o'clock in uh, 170th Street in Saint Nicholas. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Now, those hashtags, explain those hashtags. Maybe type in the hashtags on the live chat. Um, the, 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 the hashtag, first one uh, on top, it's Cadena Humana Contra la Corrupción. It's human chain against corruption. And the second hashtag, it's Danilo, it's corruption. Danilo is the president of the country right now. Mm-hmm. As you know, we had a there, there was a, a engineer um, architect. There was oh. a building licitation for a school here, and uh, in the, the that office, the OESOI, a they had this scheme, the, the, this all this corruption figures that asked them them for money, pressured them, didn't pay un unless they give them money. They had to buy the materials for from someone in there. So he decided, unfortunately, to suicide himself in that same building, in, wow. the, in the government office. 
And he left a note saying, this and this people are thieves, are corrupt. Uh, and um, they, 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 they took everything for me. And that's what's the note that he left after he committed suicide. It's, um, during the investigation, there are some theories that he did not commit suicide. He was killed inside the office. And, uh, but th after that, none of us know what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, government has kept it shut. That went down. And um, we are now asking for justice and stop a corruption. Nice. And, uh, and these started, what, a, a, a couple of weeks ago? Because uh, we do... When, when did they start? It's now every Wednesday you're doing them. Uh, it's every Wednesday, yeah. And, and from uh, three, three Wednesday back. Two okay. Wednesday back. Yeah, and, and this Wednesday. And has there been um, much live stream from these? That you uh, know of? No. We, we, we've, we're not doing live streams because most of the time our, um, they block our signal there. So like cell phone signals, Wi-Fi or whatever. And so we need to, we, what we do is we actually upload pictures or videos, anything that we can do, we could get there after the thing when we're out of the area. We will try this Wednesday. We will try to, to live stream. I hope that in your day you can live stream in other cities. Nice. Uh, we'll, we'll try to do it here. Because we really want the people or the world to see how things are and what's going on. Yes, and uh, as well as uh, um, Brian uh, Seaman uh, is logging on and he'll be calling us. Uh, he's a human uh, rights uh, legal advisor in uh, Calgary and a member of the Occupied Toronto live stream uh, and good to have everyone on. Uh, he's Wendigo Slayer on uh, on the live chat. And, hey UK watching, it's been a while and Fred 109 and Prusso Girl and Catwoman and Kayleen is on and uh, yeah it's good to see all these people and uh, uh, I think we're being restreamed at uh, uh, Global Occupy News now and soon enough on Global Rev, Occupy Wall Street, live stream and mothership. So Brian's going to be calling. We'll add him. We're still trying to get a hold of Ariel. Uh, I've been calling him so many times. Uh, connectivity issues or Skype issues on his end is the problem. So uh, let's let's continue because um, we we've covered a lot with Ariel over the last three years. So, you know stuff like. Canadian mining interests uh, are really ruining the economy and uh, oh, yes. environment uh, of uh, the DR, and that's led to a lot of corruption. I mean, what are some of the roots of the corruption of the Dominican Republic and uh, government? Now, who's in power right now, and who's the There's president? A, who's in, in power right now? It's the PLD. It's a for our, uh, the liberate Dominican Lib Lib Liberation Party, and um, and the president right now is Danilo Medina. A, the you you mentioned the the mining thing when Barry Gold came here, they made a a deal of export exploding our uh, our land. And um, they're not even respecting the um, national parks. They just they're they're just mining wherever they want. Not even government can can actually um, stop them because they sign a pact. Like ninety seven percent of the of their of the the gold it's theirs, and um, only three percent it's ours for our economy and uh, he, lately there was some selling issue to a, a government to a company that doesn't even exist before <laughs> a, we, we people reporters here try to look at 
at um, records or what, whatever thing they could get on this company. It was it was a brand new company, so because of something that I don't know yet, but for sure they they are. And um, as you know, I mean, people we we've been we've been uh, fighting for corruption from I can't remember what year, but this party, political party, controls the justice in the Dominican Republic. I mean, all the the Supreme Court judges except two are from that party. So we don't have an independent uh, justice system here in the Dominican Republic, which is one of the m biggest problems we have. The um, um, Junta Central Electoral, which is the um, electoral office or dependent, it's run by a member of the central committee of this same party. So we, there's no independence, there's no check and balance. This is one party that controls all the powers of state. So this is what we call a dictocracia, which means a dictatorship democracy, maybe. Yeah. So, um, so it's all, it's all, I mean, there's, there's a lot of lying going on. There's the people, the ministers going to the UN and the file where whatever United Nations office saying that a hundred million uh, Dominicans went out of poverty, which is actually a lie because we had 900 new po poor people. Middle class has disappeared here. Uh, so there's a lot of lying going on, and there's not, there, the truth is not going on. One important thing is that they're controlling now the media and the press. Uh, th these numbers are gave by them. Not, not, this is not something we are um, assuming or inventing. These numbers are in. These numbers are public. They're investing three thousand two hundred million pesos buying the press. So news anchors, newspapers, um, independent reporters. There. I mean, you don't see what the reality because they are being. They're they're being paid. They are being paid by government. There are very few independent people um, in the in the news area that act that, that could actually see and say what's really going on. Well, we're uh, we're, 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 uh, we're trying company. to change that. This is why oh, we, we need to train video ninjas or live streamers, as they're known as it, video ninjas in the Latin American countries, uh, and where you bypass all that. Right, and the Dominican Republic, you know, uh, is a beehive of live streamers in Latin America, even more than any other place that I know of. I know of one live stream uh, in all of South America that's anonymous, Brazil. There's a couple in Mexico, and you know, I know of at least three video ninjas in the DR. And uh, just on, we have Brian Seaman. Yeah. I'm Hi, Jay. I'm having problems logging in for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, logging into what? To live stream. I was logged in and then it kicked me off and now I'm trying to log back in and it's telling me that's not recognizing my password. Uh, uh, well, you could just write your name again and just type and see what happens. Oh, okay. Here I am. I don't know what happened. I'm yeah, back. It's just one of those things. Uh, yep. So this is Brian, and uh, we have Luis uh, Mura. How do you pronounce that, uh, Luis? Mura. Mura. Uh, say hello to each other. Hola, Luis. Hi. How are you? And Luis. Good. How are you? Good. How are you? 
Yeah. Okay. Brian's okay. in Calgary, Good. Alberta, Canada, and Luis is in uh, Santo Domingo, the capital of the DR, the Dominican Republic. The DR. Yes, and uh, so uh, we we hey, and Ariel is he's, there now. He's, he's having some problems. For yeah, some uh, uh, on Skype. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll wait for him to call us. <laughs> In the meantime, we'll continue. You you've been on before many times, and both of you were are on at the request of Ariel, by the way. And uh, we've talked about corruption in the Dominican Republic and uh, before. Uh, you know, a lot of worldwide corruption experts are actually called corruption legally corruption and transparency experts because there's a correlation. The more transparent the government is, the less corruption there is. The, le the least amount of transparency, the more corruption. Uh, so maybe uh, from a Canadian point of view and human rights point of view there, Brian, uh, tell us about uh, corruption and transparency worldwide and uh, how to deal with it. I know it's a big question. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a huge question. Um, well, I think, first of all, I mean, you need to have a, a culture of governance and, and rule of law. Um, so there are, you know, only at most uh, 30 or 40 states which have some kind of a rule of law and um, a culture of, of good governance. And that's not to say, of course, that corruption cannot occur in Canada because yes, indeed it can and it does, but at least we have a legal system where people will be held accountable for um, for the corrupt, uh, corrupt acts. So, that's, par that's paramount. You need to have rule of law and you need to have a culture that promotes uh, good governance. Um, throughout many countries in the world, uh, unfortunately, um, bribery seems to be the way to get things done. So you need to have a culture of good governance and, and transparency, as you said. When things are done in secret, then it's, it's very tempting to, to, to do corrupt things. Yeah, and there's transparency on the part of the government, on the part of you know, the courts, and also, the, as they call the fourth estate, the media. Mm -hmm. And certainly, Luis, uh, the corruption of the media in the Dominican Republic, tell us a little bit about that. On, on what? Uh, uh, you know, how the mainstream media in the, the, the DR is really uh, dropping the ball. It's, it's very corrupt. It's just uh, uh, not reporting what's really going on on the ground. Tell us about it's the media. It's, not it's too actually, many. Go ahead. It, it's being bought. It's being bought by the government. So um, you, you, it, something could happen, and and, and it's not going to be. It's not going to be uh, transmitted, or maybe not a projected as it, as it is. They they're manipulating information and um, accommodating things or information not to be against the government, maybe put it on favor of the government. That we, only, only independent communicators and some actually well-known are, are, are with us. Because this, I mean, they, they're saying this cannot continue. They need, this needs to, needs to stop. But um, a few of the newspapers Few of um, radio commenter uh, peop, um, anchors are just um, like we call them are um, speakers of the government. They they lie to people. They they uh, uninform people, and uh, they're more doing campaign for the government than even defending their own people, their own country. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So um, that's one of what that's one of the things that concerns us, us the most because before the media used to be a power and it could even turn the 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 the, the wrist or uh, to the government and right now this is all one big um, corrupt system that we are seeing. Yeah, and then I'm also trying to connect with Ariel. We've connected with him, but there's no... Ariel, can you say something? 
Ariel's in New York City. Uh, okay. There you do, go. Do, do you, uh, uh, D, do you hear me? I can hear you, but we can't see you, so you have to unmute your video to us. You remember how to uh, do on, that? On, uh, yeah, you, okay, you want me to go on the Skype, on the Skype screen and unmute the video? Yes. And then, okay, all right. Thank, I'm sorry about I'm sorry that's about okay. this. That's okay. O okay, listen, uh, it's been a while, man. Uh, where? Uh, <laughs> uh, scroll your uh, mouse. Uh, scroll your mouse over over the image, and then the pop up thing comes up at the bottom, and unmute the video, uh, the camera icon. Well, all I see I see a small screen on the right hand side. It says D Shanger, and it's got. Uh, it's got a chronometer. It has a mic icon and it has a yeah. phone icon. Unclick the camera one. Click on the camera one. That's the one you want. And that'll unmute your video. Oh, unfortunately, that little uh, that little screen only has a mic icon and a phone icon. I don't see a camera icon. And it has a chronometer and it has your name above it. Well, maybe go to preferences or tools and check your video settings. And we'll continue with this conversation. Uh, say again. Go. Uh, I don't know oh, if you have oh, Apple say. or or PC, but uh, uh, no, no, no. I got my HP. I got my okay. HP 64. 64 so go to, go to uh, tools. 64 bit. Go to tools and options, and then click video settings, and uh, then uh, which camera you want to use. Okay. Okay. I got you. Options. Okay. Okay, I got you. And video settings. Okay, and options then, and video settings. And which camera you want to use? Click the uh, which camera. Uh, can you see me now? Uh, nope. Yeah. Can you see me now? I'll let you know. Uh, I can see. Uh, I got the camera on now. Okay, well, we can't see you. Now go to the back to the screen part and then unclick the video icon. Maybe now the video icon is on because the camera wasn't clicked on. Uh, say again, please. Scroll over, you know, where the mic icon is and the phone icon. The video icon should be there right now and unmute that. Click it. I'm hoping. Oh, mute. Uh, <laughs> mute. Mute. The, where, where, I'm, where it says video settings. It says video settings. Yeah, you have it on the camera, correct? Uh, You've selected oh, your okay. camera. I got uh, HP True Vision HD, which is my camera. Okay, so like select, select good. webcam now HP save True Vision so D. That's my camera. Okay, so save it, save it. And web webcam. I'm sorry. Webcam settings. Webcam settings. No, no. Just save it. Just make sure it's on that. Webcam settings. And save that option. Save the options. Get out of that window. Okay, get out of the options window. Yeah, save. Hit save. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I've never whatever. been up. Oh, uh, save? Yeah. I'm sorry. You yeah. know that I have a hearing problem. Okay, no, no. there it is. Yeah, now scroll the mouse over the image again until you see where the mic and the, the phone icon is. Hopefully the video camera icon is now on. Uh, and and tools again. Go to tools. No, scroll the mouse over the Skype image of me and Luis and uh, and stuff. Ah, okay. Oh, uh, and, okay. And unmute. The one... Scroll. Just scroll the mouse, and then you'll see the icons for the mic and the uh, telephone. Ah, okay. Where it says D Shanger. There's a video yeah. camera. There's a phone. Yeah. Now do you see the video camera icon? Yeah. Okay, now unclick that so you unmute it. And we should see you. Uh, uh, it's not reacting. Apparently I'm on the I'm the wrong icon. It says it says video call. Apparently I'm the wrong one. There's no video camera icon button. There's a there's a video call icon. Uh, put the mouse on uh, that. What does it say? I'm sorry. Uh, say again please. Put the mouse over the video icon, and what 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 does it say? It so says video call. That's the only uh, that's the only video icon I click, see click as it. I click as I. What? I'll tell uh, you when we see you. 
If this doesn't work, then we'll just do audio only for you. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's just do audio. Uh, this is, uh, if this doesn't work, okay, we'll just continue. We'll just continue this way. If you figure it out during the call, just do it. But for now, we'll leave it at this. So, Ariel, uh, welcome. Uh, this is episode 113 of uh, my weekly show, Shangers on a live stream. And I think Ariel's been on about 30 of them. And almost all the time, Brian's been on. So tell us what's going on with the, in the DR. Already, Luis has told us some stuff. And we've had a, a little bit of a conversation with Brian. But we... You know, we got hours to go. So, Ariel, uh, tell us about what's going on. And you're in the New York City. Brian's in uh, Calgary. And Luis is in Santo Domingo, the capital of the Dominican Republic. So, take it away, Ariel. Uh, okay. You, uh, how is my audio? It's perfect. So can, tell can you hear me okay, D? I hear you perfect. Uh, uh, okay. My apologies. <laughs> My okay. apologies. Yeah, so go ahead. Tell us about what's going on. Uh, Luis was yeah, already saying apologies. that this Wednesday is the uh, fifth, uh, the fourth Wednesday in a row that they're doing uh, the rallies, the locking arms, and apparently there's one in New York City. Uh, so, uh, yeah, tell us about it, Ariel. Ariel. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, did Luis mention that there's going to be an action, a uh, simultaneous action in New York City Wednesday? Yes, he did. Ah, uh, well, okay. If he can, after the stream, after the live stream, if he can please get in touch with me because we're already in, we're already in touch uh, directly. If he can uh, give me some yeah, of that I'm information. Gonna, I'm I'm gonna give. I'm gonna DM him with that. It's 170 and St. Nicholas at seven o'clock. Uh, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yes. Uh, Wednesday. Yes. Uh, do, do, do they do they know where which uh, which uh, train line uh, which uh, train stop and which train line is there? Ariel, you could deal with that later. Uh, um, let's nope. get to it. You can find that out later, but let's yeah. get to it. Uh, talk about some of the roots of this corruption in the Dominican Republic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, later on, if, uh, if you can, uh, if you can uh, send me the link for the to the action, I'll appreciate. It. Uh, okay. Uh, have, Louise, is, uh, Louise apparently uh, ha has been on for a while. Uh, I wasn't able to, to get the uh, the first portion uh, uh, the first portion of the stream. Uh, I, I, did Louise give you guys a capsule a capsulized brief of yeah. what what occurred what triggered what triggered the current uh, corruption uh, protests uh, a little bit of the chronology a little bit of the history or have you guys been more or less talking uh, specifics? Uh, Luis, uh, did you, you talked about that suicide of the uh, and the uh, did you talk about the architect? I'm not sure. Luis, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. I mean, you guys, you guys are already. Uh, yes. Are you already informed about the the basic chronology of what occurred, what can happened, and how? The evolution and what's what's and where we are today uh, with Cadena Humana Oi Soy. Okay, that's good. Uh, first of all, uh, before I before I make any comments, the I'm re <laughs> you know me, I'm excitable, I'm excitable, and I'm I'm really gratified that that we finally uh, have been uh, successful in getting uh, getting activists uh, from on the ground in Dominican Republic. Uh, uh, with your with your extensive background in live stream being an activism, uh, basically, Cadeno Mana Oisoy, I'm not speaking for them because I'm not there. Luis is a spokesperson right now, but basically, uh, the synergism the synergism had that has occurred up to this point, uh, which I'm very happy that uh, we've finally been able to uh, have a meeting of minds. 
Uh, I think we're breaking new ground here, uh, D, not to get off the subject. Uh, I think we can go more into detail that later on as we talk about the dynamics of what has occurred up to now. Uh, but I think we're, I think everybody's breaking new ground, uh, but particularly in the Dominican Republic, as uh, they become more globalized, as they become more globalized, and uh, both in their underground and then their cyber activist side of the house, uh, to propel this movement forward, I think uh, among the parenthetical thoughts I would have at this time is to see how we can help the movement be uh, on a global scale from whichever point of the planet we are so that we can uh, give them a lending hand, so to speak, so that they can move to the next level. I think, uh, I think that's one of the issues that we need to do. I think we need to we need to uh, give a level of uh, unconditional solidarity to Cadena Mano y Soy to the point that they start uh, uh, they start exploring the possibilities. You're in the uh, in the ideal situation that you can advise them concerning uh, use stream, concerning live stream. Uh, they need to break this media blackout. Uh, Luis has mentioned in the past about uh, about the possibility of jamming, area jamming in the OSOI uh, area close to the presidential battle in Santo Domingo. Uh, we need to start getting some intel from underground. We need to get, start getting some visuals. We need to start getting some, some videos and some cameras if we see some mobile units uh, of a type, uh, well, you know, like uh, 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 one-and-a-half-ton vehicles of the type stream. that... Uh, uh, uh -huh. Homeland Security uses, uh, you know, with antennas popping out and all that. We need to know whether they're mobile units jamming or whether they're coming from a building or what have you. And we need to get some confirmations and those technicalities. You and Louise can work on those things. But getting back to the whole dynamics of the whole thing, uh, from, uh, from this point of the cyber activist uh, side of the house, uh, we need to uh, open up the entire gamut of our experience, both uh, technically and what have you, so that uh, Cadeno Mano Isua moves, starts moving into the next uh, level of the struggle. I'm having some slight uh, signal issues, and I think they seem to be correcting. Uh, Bride, uh, uh, do you want to add anything to this, Brian? And then Luis? Brian? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I'll, uh, yeah, I guess I can only add that um, I think it's absolutely important that we have uh, critical and independent uh, journalists. Um, Luis has identified that the press is basically owned by the government in uh, the Dominican Republic and of course that will obviously present a problem because then the government is just using the press to basically get its uh, message out so I think that's where uh, having independent journalists um, uh, who are operating outside the mainstream uh, through live stream and other avenues is critically important to uh, to get the message out about what's taking place on the ground. Night, Luis? Yes. You've been on uh, the last three and you will be there in, this Wednesday. What's the mood on the ground that the, that the people you know, are fed up and protesting? Because we know in the DR, unlike North America, you know, they don't use rubber bullets, those cops. People die at these rallies and marches. So, uh, and really the history of protests is not that popular in the Dominican Republic just because of the way the police handle it. But what's changed this time on the ground there, Luis? Well, let, let me tell you, the, 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 the country, the people are protesting. The press, it's not, it's not, it's not um, uh, communicating it, but there's protests, there are riots all over the, the country right now, uh, demanding um, services uh, or streets to be fixed or whatever. The, the important thing of this um, um, protest, the Cadena Humana Oisoe, is, is that this is the middle class going to the streets, that it's not normal. This is not what you see day, day to day. 
Um, people are afraid. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, because there there is some aggression, there is some brutality on the police side. There is some abuse. They even close the the streets around the national palace that is in front of this uh, government uh, office for people not to get there. And we've, we're not being able, uh, after the, the first Wednesday, to protest where we want to protest that it's in front of that office. We've been, we've been being held back uh, two blocks down from that office and the National Palace by the police. Uh, last Wednesday, I, I guess, like a ballpark number, it would be around 200 to 300 police officers for a group of probably 80 people protesting pacifically there. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the 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 people they wanna they wanna they wanna speak out. They want to express their discontent, their their their, frus their frustration that they have. But some people are being you know uh, cautious about it because from from nowhere this police officer high ranked comes to one of us and just paper pepper spray everyone there without n with no reason whatsoever to do that and um what happened last wednesday that, that they they um they in they uh how do you say that they they closed us in between the the guardrails and we can leave until it's probably kettling. 30 at night. It's called exactly. kettling? Yeah, kettling. 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 We can leave yeah. at, uh, until 8.30 because they just they didn't want us to leave. I mean, they, they, they surrounded us like a, a, like, a, like a punishment from being there. Um, but like I say, uh, people want want to speak out. They want to project their their frustration. I mean, the country is still protesting all over, but it's not getting the message across. And the government just being it's playing the no see, no hear, no speak game. Yeah. And Brian, uh, maybe uh, you could uh, advise us to some unique ways of protesting. Like a lot of times they have those, uh, what do they call them? Uh, those human rights uh, watchers there. You know, just impart some, you know, way to keep everyone safe and how people do it worldwide. Brian? Well, you know, the um, Canadian experience is, is obviously drastically different from the Dominican Republic experience because uh, in the Dominican Republic and, and in other countries, the police use live ammunition and fire right into the crowd. So I, I don't know how much practical advice I can give about keeping safe there. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, the police here don't, don't use live ammunition. I mean, if they do use bullets. I suppose it would be rubber bullets. They'd use rubber bullets um, at, uh, at a, to break up a, an otherwise peaceful protest at Alsepatog, New Brunswick, uh, uh, over two years ago, Day, as, as you yeah. know, because you were you were on the ground there for a while and you knew what was taking place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know, I mean, how to, how to keep people safe. I, I suppose the, the first rule then is to not do anything that's deliberately provocative, but uh, you know the definition of what's provocative in a in an authoritarian country like the Dominican Republic is going to be pretty narrow, I would say. Um, so I would say strength in numbers, um, uh, sit-ins, um, and I think having observers from non-governmental organizations and uh, media, ideally, if you can get Western, uh, you know, democratic correspondents there to observe that that may help, but. Um, you know, it's a very different situation in the Dominican Republic. So, as I said, I mean, here, you know, in Calgary, um, the worst the worst that can happen would be somebody might shout out some some nasty comment to you from a passing car. But in the Dominican <laughs> Republic, you can get shot. So, 
I'm afraid I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm afraid I, I can't offer any real practical advice because I come from a very different experience. No, no, you've said a lot because having legal observers, having human rights observers, taking notes, and however they document the situation, uh, just to keep everything on the up and up. Yes, having uh, you know Western media or media that I mean, that, well, yeah. live streaming, um, live I mean, streaming that, that can help. Yeah, right? you know uh, having people who, you know, a doctor or nurses that could help uh, in terms of if anything happens. You don't want anything to happen, but, you know, you want to be prepared, you know, and, and it seems like they're getting organized. Uh, every Wednesday, they're doing yeah. uh, these peaceful uh, marches uh, in all over, not just in the capital, but all over the DR. So it, it's good to impart some uh, way to keep people safe. And I, I would not, really just, and one, just one and, thing. I mean, I, I, I do know that um, from uh, having read uh, the history of Argentina is that the in Argentina, Oh, you cut out there, Bri. Well, wow. okay, there you go. In Argentina was the last thing you said. The audio went really choppy here, Jay. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about anybody else. But. Yeah. It's it's probably all on my end. Uh, I'm having, it's, it's great that you guys are all on audio. That helps with bandwidth. It's just one of those things here. Uh, we're not live, and but you'll. Okay. You, the last thing we heard from you, Bri, was in Argentina, so you could start with that. Okay, we are back, and the last thing Bri was saying, I'm having signal problems on my end, folks, and I thank the three participants. They're all on audio only on Skype. That's so I can save some bandwidth. And I just want to say one thing before we get back to Brian is, uh, you know, nothing keeps people safe on the ground than live stream. Live stream, being live is the most important thing. It saves people because uh, cops hate the live image. Uh, okay, Brian, you were just about to talk about, you read a book in, about Argentina and you're saying in Argentina. Well, I mean, I've, no, I've read, I've read a lot about Argentina's uh, history, particularly during the uh, dictatorship, the military dictatorship from the late 70s to the early 80s and then in the aftermath. Um, during, during that time, I mean, we saw the power of women, of mothers and grandmothers, of people who were disapp had disappeared, were murdered by the regime. Uh, the grandmothers uh, during the uh, and mothers during the last uh, year of the uh, of the Argentinian dictatorship would meet every, I believe it's every Tuesday, uh, every Thursday rather, uh, every Thursday at noon, in the main square in the main plaza in Buenos Aires, uh, in the city's capital, close to the Casa Rosada, which is the uh, Argentinian equivalent to the White House or the, house, or the White House. Um, that's where the president of Argentina lives. And the grandmothers would uh, simply bear silent witness to, to the fact that their sons and daughters had been taken illegally and had disappeared. We now know that they were murdered. And they continue to meet there uh, every Thursday in uh, mute protest. So I think that the uh, power of women, uh, mothers and grandmothers, um, can have a very strong moral persuasion. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, these uh, soldiers and police, uh, are, they going to, uh, are they going to shoot into a crowd of, of, of grandmothers? Um, so I think that the women in Argentina showed uh, resolute strength and, and helped to... Uh, improve the human rights situation in that country. I do want to say or ask Luis something, and that is he mentioned that the recent protests are the middle class that are in the streets. The, uh, every revolution that has succeeded at some point has obtained um, the support of large elements of the uh, police and military uh, apparatus because, I mean, these are people who are, you know, they have sons and daughters and they're related to people out on the streets. I'm just wondering whether, Luis, there's been any indication uh, to date of any possible uh, support, tacit or otherwise, from from police and military uh, for the uh, for the middle class uh, revolution. We are trying to we are trying to. Jay, we're trying I, I to can't... get to get to them. We're we're talking to them. We're trying to. Um, 
reason to them because they're, 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 they are one of the uh, the the most affected because they 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 are earning. 